Now, one of my favorite pieces of equipment besides my fish finder when I'm out on the ice is my Markham Pursuit HD camera. It really gives me access to the underwater world where I'm not having to make interpretations of sonar data. I get real world color or at least black and white infrared video feed of what's going on down below me. I can use this to see fish taking my gear. I can use this to look at what the bottom structure is like and water clarity is like and what my gear looks like and how it's running. And the camera is absolutely a very important component of this whole thing, but also having some kind of panning system. Uh, the nice thing about this camera is it gives me directionality. It tells me what cardinal direction the camera is facing. Um, but in order to make those micro adjustments on the directionality that the camera is pointing, I really have to have a panner. And there's not many panners on the market, so I thought I'd cover two different panners today. The first panner I'm gonna cover is Markham's own wired panner. And then I also have Yoyo's panner system, a tripod panner. Now, uh, I've done comparisons of Yoyo's camera with the Markham camera, and I'll post a link to the video to that at the end of this video. But I'm gonna be using the Markham camera today with the Yoyo panner and the Markham panner. I'm gonna talk specifically about the panners and which one might be best for you. All right, we're gonna start with the Markham panner. It has a nine or 10 foot long wire cable. They make a remote controlled one. This wired one costs around 30 bucks and the remote version costs around 60 bucks. Otherwise, one section contains the motor and the attachment point and the other are these two arms that allows it to sit over the top of the hole. And one of the nice things about having a wired system versus a remote system is that you do not have to worry about losing the remote. Um, so you have to keep track of those fobs if you have the remote system. It's able to fit a 16 inch hole. So it has a diversity of hole sizes it can fit over. Now the lake I'm on today is a great example of why I don't like this panner. And that is uh, the batteries are down inside here underneath. And there's a little rubber gasket that runs along the battery pack. But the screws that are holding that in are super tiny and are constantly popping out because they're really easily stripped because they're plastic. And because of that, you're not getting a watertight seal and I fish on a lot of slushy lakes up here. We get a lot of snow before we get hard freezes and that results in a lot of snow and water trapped on top of the ice because we get warm days. And uh, if I put this down in the water, I'm just gonna get water in the battery compartment. So I have to like build up a little snow bank around the hole during situations like this uh, in order to prevent that thing from just getting totally soaked, which is kind of a nuisance. So I have to do that real quick before we get started on it. So I have to build up that snow bank so that this stays up off of the ice. It's okay for the arms to go down there, but I want that battery pack up off the water. Now attaching the cable to this is really easy. They've got a little groove and tab system that you simply just put the wire down through there, spin this tab to lock it in, and that is it. And it's very easy to deploy and get ready. So I've got that down there. I'll go ahead and give you an underwater view of what's going on down there. And so I can just pan left or right using this remote and it works really well. You can go pretty quickly or you can just do little touches of the button to get slow movement. And I've been using it for two seasons now and I have had some issues with corrosion because of that battery compartment design, like constantly going to the hardware store and buying replacement screws. And I just replaced those a few weeks ago at the beginning of the season and they've already popped out just from being loaded, unloaded, unwrapped and things like that. So I'm gonna have to drill that out and figure out some other solution for it. It definitely is a design flaw in this panner system, but it is one of the cheaper panners on the market at 30 bucks, it's not that bad a deal. And if you don't have to deal with slush like I do, then maybe it's not that big of a deal breaker in the Midwest. They do tend to get a lot more hard freezes and hard ice that keeps uh, water off of the surface of the ice. But I know that during meltdown, it can be an issue too. Now, one of the good things about the Markham Panner 
is that it does pull down to a very compact size. You can wrap the cable up, or if you have a remote, uh, you just clip the remote back on there. And it's very compact and easy to transport, so it doesn't take up a ton of space in my sled. Okay, now the other panner system I'm going to use today is the uh, Yo-Yo panner. Now, Yo-Yo makes really affordable underwater cameras that are incrementally getting better and better and better. They're based on like a small suitcase design. And I've done reviews on them. The camera quality in terms of the image isn't quite up to snuff with the Markham Pursuit, but I feel like the Markham Pursuit is really up there at the top. Uh, but they're getting better and making improvements. They also tend to have longer cable systems and bigger battery systems in there. And they do have recording capability, just like the Pursuit HD. And they do seem uh, interested in really becoming one of the best uh, underwater fishing camera companies on Amazon. So they come out with their own panner system because one of the, my one of my main ridicules of last season is that they didn't have any panner system. Their panner system is based on a tripod design. Um, so it comes disassembled uh, without the legs on there. You just got to put the legs on there, which can be done with thumb screws, which is really easy to do. And then you screw in the panner arm there. And it has an on off switch here. And this is a wireless one only. It comes with a little fob. So with this tripod design, um, I don't have to worry about anything being soaked. This has got about five or six inch uh, tall tripod legs. Additionally, unlike the Markham, which requires a screwdriver to gain access to the battery compartment, this one's very easy. It's just a common sense uh, battery compartment that takes uh, AA batteries. The top of this tripod is designed uh, for their fish finders to sit on top of, but obviously I'm not going to use that today because I'm using uh, my Pursuit attached to my Helix shuttle. But this is still a nice space that you can utilize for something. So if you're not going to put a camera there, you can think about other things you might put there too. You can put camera systems um, for GoPros and things like that. Um, or you can glue maybe a little tackle kit on here. There's a lot of options here in terms of being creative about using this space. So enough blabbing. Let's uh, get this thing down there. I don't need all this snow adjacent to the hole anymore. But I think, you know, having all this slush is a great example of why a panner like this one's going to pan out, no pun intended, a little bit better today. So in order to put the cable on here, it's fairly easy. Make a loop, go around that fork, and then just run the cables down inside. It's very simple and stable. It's not going to slip. Then all I gotta do is just set this over the hole. Now it's designed for holes up to 10 inches, but it works best with eight and under. So now that I've got that deployed, they have a little fob that comes with it. And it's just a matter of, then we gotta turn on the on switch and then it's very easy to simply turn the panner. Now their panner turns slower and it's less herky-jerky. I actually like the motion if you see here on the footage, you see how nice and slow the panner turns. Now both of these panners will eventually, if you keep trying to rotate them in one direction, they start to bind up on themselves. And the Yo-Yo and Markham are both alike in this feature. They seem to have like, once you get initially deployed, they have about a 350 degree of motion that they can do really relatively smoothly and then they start to bind up on the wire as the wire starts to turn and get cranked up. So you may have to adjust just the positioning of the panner over the hole just a little bit to get sort of the range of motion that you want to have if you want to be able to focus on a specific area. Now the Yo-Yo panner retails for closer to $70, so it's the most expensive one. However, I do feel like the Yo-Yo panner is a slightly better panner for these situations that I'm in where we've got a lot of standing water on the surface. I really don't have to worry about this unit. It's solid metal. I feel like it's gonna last a long time, seems very durable. I'll put links to both of these panners. If you have any additional questions, please let me know. And I'll come back and revisit these panners at the end of the season and just kind of let you know how they've held up over the entire ice season. All right, guys, I'll see you next time out on the ice. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.